Welcome to my channel Remember Me. Thank you so much for watching this video. I believe that if people remember and talk about cases, then there will be more of a chance that new information will surface and that this information could help solve a case. If you would like to recommend a case, please contact me on my details below. Frank Newberry, aged 87, had owned and operated a grocery store in Cook Hill, a suburb of Newcastle, New South Wales, Australia, called Frank's Ham and Beef. He was a World War II veteran and had saved money during a stint in the Navy and bought his store outright after the war. I came out of the Navy and found myself a future wife before paying outright for the shop, he said. Frank married Eleanor, but unfortunately she died in 1989. Frank had owned the store since 1951 and was well known in his community. A customer stated that he lived above the shop, the shop was his life and that kept him young. Mr Newbury was a well-liked man in the community and was known as Old Frank. He was well liked for his personal nature. One of the reasons his store was popular was due to his delivery service in which he'd helped customers pack their groceries away. In 2001, he was voted world's best grocer by his customers who banded together to ensure Old Frank took out the award. Later that year, Newcastle Council announced plans to demolish the store to make way for a new entrance to a car park. The community were outraged and protested the development with ferocity not usually seen in the quickly developing city. The plans were shredded and Frank's ham and beef remained standing. Murder At 7am on March 12, 2007, Frank Newbury walked downstairs from his flat and opened the door to his convenience store. Swinging the sign on the window open and settling in behind the counter, it's old-fashioned cash register as much a fixture as old Frank. Sometime in the morning, Newbury left the store briefly to attend the funeral of Lily Wood. Just 10 days earlier, Wood had been bashed to death on the veranda of her home, less than a kilometre from Newbury's store. She was 88 years old and the brutal killing sent ripples through the community. While Newbury was at the funeral that morning, the store was manned by a lady who had worked at Frank's Ham and Beef for nearly 20 years. That day, as usual, she left at 3pm, leaving Newbury to man the counter until the 5pm closing time. At 4.12pm, Newbury served his final customer, a woman who later gave details at his 2012 inquest. At this stage, there were three people inside the store. Newbury, this woman, and a man she described as having long blonde curly hair, wearing a cap, and a grey polo shirt. She was unable to give further details, not unusual given the regular air of the afternoon. Six minutes later, one of Newbury's regulars came to the store to find the front glass door shut. Thinking this unusual, he peered through the tinned window and saw a man with long hair wearing either a beanie or a cap crouching down near the counter. He was placing something into a green Envo bag. This was undoubtedly the same man the previous customer had seen. There was no sign of Newbury. The shopkeeper was found roughly 10 minutes later, slumped near the counter of his shop. He had been brutally beaten around the head and was barely alive. He was covered in bruises and lying in a pool of his own blood. Frank was rushed to the hospital but died that evening, as done locals crowded around the store. When news of his passing spread, the gathering turned into a vigil, with dozens trading stories about the gentleman grocer well into the night. Investigation When police arrived at the scene, they initially suspected this was a robbery gone wrong. The register was open and money was missing. This was generally in line with community perceptions of him. There was nothing in his past which would have made him a target, so it was assumed that this was a random, violent act. The official cause of death was blunt force trauma, seemingly from two separate weapons. This may suggest two attackers or improvised. Police initially operated on the theory of a robbery gone wrong, but Newbury had $1,500 in cash in his pocket at the time of his death. 
If this was a robbery, it was a brazen and badly conducted one, given this remaining cash on his person, how busy the store was usually, and that the murder was conducted in broad daylight. This suggests that the murder was a targeted assault, because one would think a potential robber would have searched his pockets after the assault. However, due to the lack of any other apparent motive, robbery cannot be completely ruled out as a motive, and it's still listed as a potential motive on the New South Wales Police's website. Detective Sergeant Matthew Faber told the Newcastle Herald, while we believe that it's a robbery gone wrong, has always appeared to have been the most likely scenario, we will consider and explore all possibilities, including that the incident could have been a deliberate act upon Mr Newbury. Frank's murder was thought to have possibly been linked to the murder of Lily Wood. However, the murders were found to be unrelated, the man who murdered Lily Wood would be convicted and imprisoned in 2008. Both murders were shocking in the community, however, due to both Lily Wood and Frank Newbury being such recognisable figures in the community. The day after Newbury was found beaten to death, a regular customer told the Sydney Morning Herald he had been devastated by Wood's death. The customer had entered the store the morning before, and although the pair exchanged their usual pleasantries, Newbury was clearly affected. He asked me if I'd had a lovely weekend, but he was still upset about a funeral, the customer recounted. So let's get into some suspects. There are no suspects known by name. Eight possible witnesses captured by a security camera attached to the nearby Newcastle Workers Club provided no information, and police are confident they spoke to everyone of Newbury's customers that day, aside from the man they'd spotted in the store around the time of the murder. The suspect seen in the store is believed to have long hair and was wearing a hat or beanie and dark clothes on the day of the murder. This man was described by two witnesses to have been crouching in the store shortly after 4pm on the day of the murder. At the 2012 coroner's inquest into the murder, one witness placed this man at the store at 4.12pm. She described him as having long blonde curly hair, wearing a grey polo shirt and a cap. The other witness, a man who went to the store six minutes later to find that the store was closed, described the man as having long dark hair and wearing dark clothing and a beanie. This witness saw the man crouching down and putting something in a green, environmentally friendly bag. While these witnesses were describing someone with different hair colours, it could have been that they were the same man. Frank's store had dark tinted windows, so someone's hair colour could appear darker through the window if they didn't get a good look at him. Police interviewed several suspects and DNA swabs were taken from everyone known to have visited the store that day and compared to DNA evidence found in the store. Two DNA samples remain unidentified. There have been times when apparent suspects have surfaced, however none have fit the bill. One, a Port Stephens man was reportedly boasting about the murder but was found to be lying. Another was a schizophrenic drug addict who had broken out of a nearby psychiatric hospital twice that day and was a leading suspect but was also cleared, despite his driver's license being found in the store. Strike Force Ryan was set up to investigate the case but encountered dead ends for years. Coroner's Inquest In 2012, there was a coroner's inquest into the murder. This inquest concluded that Frank Newbury had been assaulted by a person or possibly multiple people who were, and still to this day, are identified. Peter Mahan, a detective investigator with the New South Wales Police serving in Newcastle, went on the record in 2017 saying, We are still not sure of the motive because if it was a robbery, you would have thought that they would have searched Frank and taken his money from his wallet. Detective Mahan also believes there's a people in the community who knew what happened to Frank. Despite the availability of DNA evidence, there's nobody to connect it to and police are still unsure of the motive. The coroner delivered an open finding. Aftermath By 2015, police had shifted their thinking, admitting that Newbury may have been specifically targeted by the murderer. 
A New South Wales police spokesperson provided a short statement to news.com.au on where the case sits. Police are continuing their appeal for information. The reward is still in place. No arrests have been made. It remains an unsolved homicide. In other words, they've got nothing. For now, the key to solving this homicide is finding the man who was in the store moments before Newbury was murdered. As time goes by, the chances of finding him grow slimmer. Strike Force Ryan has ordered extensive DNA testing in the past, which uncovered nothing to note. However, this latest review of the case will see New South Wales Police use a previously unavailable genetic genealogy DNA database. Similar to the type used by ancestry services such as 23andMe, as well as DNA nanotyping, which can develop a facial likeness based on DNA code. These are substantial leads in technology that may yield positive results. For now, Frank's Ham and Beef is still open Monday to Friday in the same old building. It is owned and ran by former customer Jenny Boswell, who last year described Newbury's murder to the ABC as a tragedy that people just can't get over in our town. For now, she is running the little store by the same principles as Newbury, although she does close an hour earlier than he did. Currently, the New South Wales Police are offering a $100,000 reward for anyone with information that could lead to this case being solved. However, no evidence strong enough to warrant a court case or a conviction has serviced. If you have any information, please contact Crime Stoppers on 1800333000. Hard work never killed anyone, Newbury told the Newcastle Herald in 1999 when a reporter marvelled at his long vitty. I never got tired of working here, five days a week from 7am to 5pm. Frank was described by one of his customers, Karen Self, who had been visiting the store for 20 years, described him as the loveliest, kindest old man you could ever meet. Other frequent customers described him as being a living treasure. Frank's murder or murderers remain at large and his case remains unsolved. Thank you so, so much for watching this video and for taking the time to remember this case. It would really mean a lot if you could share this video to spread these people's stories in the hope that new information will surface. To recommend a case, please contact me on Instagram or send me an email. Thank you!